Life discovered on Mars. These are words that many may have expected to hear a few centuries ago. In the modern age of space exploration and observation, however, humanity has been to Mars, remotely of course, though the point still stands. It is well known what the surface of the red planet looks like, and it is not hospitable. There is very little atmosphere on Mars, very little moisture, and the temperature fluctuates wildly depending on sun exposure. This means that, unfortunately, it is highly unlikely that complex biological life as it exists on Earth would ever be found on Mars. However, scientists have been searching Mars for some time in the hopes of finding a more subtle kind of life, microbes and subsurface fungi. Rocks were discovered on Mars that looked to show signs of having been inhabited by such organisms. However, there have been no true discoveries of life on Mars. Until recently. As Regina Das and a team of similarly accomplished scientists have released a study titled Evidence of Life on Mars. Das and team claim that Viking discovered life on Mars in 1976, but that it was dismissed. Not only that, the study also claims that images taken on Mars prove that there is life on the red planet. Fungi, to be exact. This is the story of the Martian mushrooms. The Viking probe was first launched in 1975, making it to Mars in June 1976. It was the second craft to soft land on Mars, and was a monumental achievement which provided scientists with more data and images from the planet than ever before. In 1978, Gilbert Levin was analyzing photos of Martian rocks taken by the Viking probe, when he observed something that he didn't expect to find. He found that there were what appeared to be green patches on some of the rocks, and even more strangely, these patches were growing and changing over time. Levenstrat and Benton weighed in on these strange patches, openly arguing that changes observed in them could represent biological activity, life on Mars. And yet, nearly 50 years later, there is no Martian archaeology department at NASA. There are no Martian biodiversity courses and biology degree programs at universities. These green patches, curious as they were, were all but ignored. A search engine query on the subject yields little more than a footnote. The green patches were thought to be signs of life, but could also have been green dirt or dust. However, if one were to stumble across the website of Dr. Gilbert Levin, his color and feature changes at Mars Viking Lander's site report is adamant that it is distinctly possible that these patches were moss, lichen, and algae growth on Mars. Yet this discovery, and the very real implications that it brought upon the field of astronomy, seem to have been swept underneath the cosmic rug. No one mentions the mysterious Martian lichens, not even in fiction. It almost appears as though a certain space agency has a vested interest in suppressing this line of thought. Incidentally, that is where Das's study comes in. The study cites the discovery of digitate silica structures, which resemble those left behind by biotic processes. Atmospheric methane fluctuations by season, which suggest decaying prokaryotes, and also the Viking images and the subsequent data. However, the most important pieces of evidence cited by the study were new images which appeared to depict fungi puffballs as well as algae and lichens. The images in question were largely taken by the Opportunity rover. They are high quality, highly defined images, something that makes image integrity a difficult argument to make. Other images used were close-up images taken of the Curiosity rover at different stages during its mission. When compared to early images, the latest photos appear to show some sort of fungal growth accumulating on various surfaces of the rover. The most common explanations for these growths are nothing new, selective dirt and dust accumulation. Not only have hundreds of images and specimens been analyzed in an effort to identify and categorize possible life forms on Mars, but there have been computer aids coded in order to further analyze these findings and organize them into an easily navigated database website. This website was made available to thousands of biologists and geologists, and these scientists were allowed to rate the data concerning the probability that these anomalies in question depicted life on Mars. Values of 1 to 4 would be ascribed to the findings, 1 being a 0% probability of the findings depicting life on Mars increasing up to a value of 4 which indicated the scientists believed there to be a 100% probability. A majority of these scientists came to the conclusion that it was probable that there was life on Mars based on these findings. Once again, with these findings, one would expect there to be a much larger buzz in the astronomy, geology, and biology communities. However, this study, like the controversial Viking findings, 
appears to be getting less than stellar attention. This is concerning, as upon looking closer at the study, it appears it is framed in such a way that would make it very difficult to ignore. The study is excessively peer-reviewed, and its easily accessible nature led to thousands of biologists and geologists participating. Furthermore, the study makes no bold or outright claims that the life being observed on Mars is even native to the Red Planet. The abstract contains pages of evidence demonstrating that certain Earth microbes, fungal spores, and algae could survive in space. Over 1,800 species of bacteria, fungi, and algae live in the troposphere, the first layer of Earth's atmosphere, but tropical storms and monsoons routinely push these organisms into the stratosphere and mesosphere, where they remain viable. Finally, solar winds could then dislodge these viable organisms from Earth's atmosphere and disperse them throughout the solar system, throughout the cosmos even, where they can easily survive and potentially land on Mars and multiply. Therefore, the study seems to avoid the stigma of little green men in flying saucers by offering the very reasonable explanation that potential life on Mars could have come from Earth, even very recently. Though the study does not say that there was never native Martian life. In fact, there are those who hypothesize that life on Earth actually came from Mars. It has long been questioned how the first life on Earth came to be, something that there has been some progress on in recent years. The most common suggestions were that complex organic molecules were somehow transferred from meteors and other interstellar ejecta. Several studies have found that complex organic molecules can be formed by electron bombardment in models of interstellar and planetary ice. Solar wind and magnetic fields accelerate charged particles, which bombard comets, asteroids, moons, and other sources of planetary ice. It has been found that this bombardment can cause chemical reactions, which lead to complex organic compounds like propylene and ethanol being formed. This would seem to suggest that under the right circumstances, life can emerge from the void with little rhyme or reason. This, along with certain Martian surface anomalies, begs the question, could life have existed on Mars long before it did on Earth? It has been suggested that during a period of time between 3 and 4 billion years ago, Mars had a thicker atmosphere and liquid surface water. The evidence of life on Mars study demonstrates the capacity of life to easily transfer from Earth to Mars. If there were microbes like algae, bacteria, and fungal spores in the Martian atmosphere 3 to 4 billion years ago, it stands to reason that those organisms could have been transferred to Earth by the same methods. Considering that Earth's proposed lifetime began roughly 4.5 billion years ago, and the first undisputable evidence of life on Earth existed roughly 3.4 billion years ago, this hypothesis and the timing seem to make sense. The evidence of life on Mars study has implications that are ridiculously far-reaching, and yet it seems to conveniently package those implications inside of a wooden horse that bears the less controversial appearance of addressing human error and contamination of Mars by Earth organisms. Could this study be a deliberate spearhead of sorts? A Trojan horse meant to force NASA's hand into finally acknowledging that there are biological anomalies on Mars. If it were finally concluded that there was life on Earth's planetary neighbor, it would open new fields of study. Manned missions to Mars, possibly even a colony, would become a reality. Even if it is merely cross-contamination from Earth, the mere fact that organisms that evolved on Earth could land on Mars and continue to thrive is nothing short of incredible. Is it possible that some of Earth's smallest, most overlooked organisms have beaten humanity to the punch and have colonized the Red Planet? Could it be that these organisms didn't come from Earth and actually evolved on Mars? Furthermore, would this research seem to suggest that perhaps life on Earth is truly Martian in origin? One can only wait for the space agencies, though it is a comforting fact that at least certain spaces in academia are abuzz with the potential of life on Mars, and the buzz may soon grow too large for those who launched the rockets to ignore. Thank you for watching and listening. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to support the channel in a more direct way, you can visit my represent.com merch store at represent.com slash store slash phobos dash media. All of the designs were hand drawn by me and represent.com has done an incredible job of putting them all onto the merchandise. We have t-shirts, we have hoodies, we even have crewnecks. And anytime that you buy the merch, you're supporting Phobos Media.
and keep watching, as I've started a side project that I think I'm going to have to announce soon. The links will be in description as always, and thanks again.